Korean cars, the chip shortage, and more. Welcome to another automotive news update. Hello, it's Elizabeth from the Homework Guy team bringing you another great update about auto news for September. If you wish, stay tuned to our community page for updates on Kevin's recovery. Your outpouring of prayers and support has been tremendous and appreciated. Here are the small news bites first, but stick around for the meat and potatoes on Korean cars or use the cool new chapters feature below to fast forward to exactly what you're looking for. Goodyear Tire and Rubber Co. has decided to invest in the future of cars and driving, particularly in the EV charging company Amp Up. Goodyear's strategy is to partner with startup companies to encourage technology that supports electric vehicles and infrastructure. But I'm confused. Aren't rubber tires going to be a thing on all cars for many years to come? Homework Guide viewers, I'd love to see your comments below on some of the best and worst tire brands that you have tried and driven. Toyota Motor Corp. has skillfully been bobbing and weaving ahead of the microchip shortage, beating GM sales in the U.S. for most of 2021. But they had a trick up their sleeve. Did you know that since the catastrophic tsunami in 2011, they have been stockpiling, hoarding microchips? All you preppers out there, yep, you got it but it looks like their stash is actually thinning out. Aww. They projected a loss of 360,000 vehicle sales globally for this month alone due to this chip shortage. That's a 40% loss. Longo Toyota dealership in El Monte, California reports that while they typically carry around 1,500 to 1,800 vehicles on their lot, they currently only have about 200. In case you missed our video on the two key factors to watch for that are influencing the outrageous car prices right now, click the card at the top of the screen. One of the factors is car lot inventory. Fewer cars, higher prices. So check out the full video for more details on that. Here's a short list of how the microchip shortage is hitting other car manufacturers. Ford Motor Company will halt F-150 production in Kansas City for a week. And the F-150 is their biggest moneymaker. Ouch. General Motors is adding downtime in its sedan and crossover plants and even put its Detroit facility that builds the Chevy Bolt EV and EUV on idle. By the way, this is the first slowdown for GM's EVs. Mercedes-Benz has slashed its V8 SUV production. Check out my previous video for more details. And Volkswagen and Audi are limiting shifts and giving time off. Okay, on to something more positive. Uber Technologies also has a new incentive program up their sleeve. They took on a retail technology company called GetUpside. This startup company aims to organize discounts and cashback rewards for Uber drivers and delivery people. This move is aimed to increase the number of Uber drivers and overcome the current shortages. In case you're curious, here's a quick rundown on Uber. According to MarketWatch, Uber drivers in some markets can collect $24.77 per hour in passenger fares. From that, Uber takes $8.33 in commissions and fees. That's a third. Then the drivers have to maintain their vehicles and get gas, which is about $4.87 per hour. But with gas prices going up and up, I'm betting this cost will too. Ubers are also self-employed, so it's about a dollar to cover their taxes. Without health insurance or retirement, drivers net an average of $10.87 per hour, or with it, only $9.21 per hour. So I'm just thinking out loud here. Uber could just take the money they're investing in to get upside and simply lower their fees for their drivers, you know, allowing them to keep more of their money. <laughs> Nothing gets potential employees' attention like just good old cash, right? Are there any Uber drivers in our audience? We'd love to do a show exclusively about Uber, so feel free to comment if you have inside information that you think is good for us to know. The three major Korean automakers under the umbrella of Hyundai Motor Group are making a big push in the electric and crossover market with plenty of redesigns and new ideas. Hyundai's first pickup truck hit the market just days ago. Pegged as being gutsy outside and glam on the inside, Hyundai feels that the best features of SUV and truck have come together here, with premium comfort and modern tech with an open bed for versatility. The base model SE starts at $23,990. SEL sits at $27,190. SEL Premium is $35,680, and the Limited is $37,920. While it has features like all-wheel drive, 10-inch touchscreen display, underfloor storage bins, and 5,000-pound towing capacity, the combined gas mileage is only 22 or 23 miles per gallon. The Santa Cruz Premium has a 281-horsepower turbocharged four-cylinder engine. So what do you think, Homework Guy viewers? Do these extra cool features make up for the fact that the engine sounds a little small and the gas mileage isn't any better than the 10- or 15-year-old trucks that we're already driving? Not to mention that these old truck beds are much larger and versatile. Comment below. 
Hyundai and Kia are also introducing new hybrid vehicles ahead of the fully electrics. Still this year, Hyundai and Kia will offer three plug-in hybrid crossovers, namely the Hyundai Tucson and Santa Fe and Kia Sorento. And in 2022, the Kia Sportage will get a facelift and join the lineup. Genesis, Hyundai's luxury manufacturer, is also rolling out its own crossovers with EV in the near future. In case you were curious, here's a quick look at what Genesis offers for fall 2021. Sedans include the 2022 G70 starting at 37,525, 2021 G80 starting at 47,700, and the 2022 G90 coming in at a whopping 73,950. SUVs include the 2022 GV70 beginning at 41,000 and the 2021 GV80 starting at 48,900. Currently, the GV80 midsize crossover is already outselling the brand's three sedans combined. But look at these numbers. It makes sense. If an SUV and a sedan cost nearly the same and they have a very similar trim level, etc., wouldn't you rather go for the bigger, more versatile vehicle? And the first Genesis electric car is coming 2023, the G80 electric. I haven't visited a dealership yet who carries Genesis vehicles, but there are over 300 in the U.S. Comment below if you've seen a Genesis up close and even got to test drive one or even bought one. What I really like about Genesis, though, is its hybrid sales process. It's like a cross between Carvana and traditional sales. It's called Genesis Concierge. First, you fill out an interest form on the manufacturer's website, and a Genesis Concierge will contact you to figure out what you're looking for in a new vehicle. Then they leave it up to you, they say. You can keep doing your homework, compare vehicle features, schedule a test drive, or just buy one. Lastly, and here's the hybrid part, when you're ready to buy or lease, a Genesis concierge will often arrange through the local dealer a home delivery of your paperwork and car. So think about the big picture. The manufacturer themselves is training an initial sales force, the concierge, and they're sort of cutting out the dealer middleman. I'd like to see some of these car contracts from the Genesis concierge deals. Are they truly sticking to the spirit of service inspired by the name and not charging hidden fees to customers? Or perhaps the delivery service has a significant charge. Do the dealers make much money on these cars? Considering the kind of customer generally interested in a luxury car line, they have more money to cover the convenience than time to waste sitting in a dealership a whole day. All right, if you appreciate our video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and please always remember to comment on our videos and share them with your family and friends. Comments really matter because they help boost our searchability and lead others to great homework guy content too. The entire homework guy team is here to represent you, the car buyer, and that's what we love to do. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. As Kevin always says, you guys rock. I'm the amazing Elizabeth. Gotta go.